life. You just want to make sure that when you take risk, you can measure it and you're getting adequate returns for your risk. If you look, for example, in the music industry, if you talk to the, the real, the top people, they know that of 10 new people they sign, one or two will make it. And so they have what they call a portfolio theory, where the one or two that are successful pays the cost of the eight that will not be successful. But it's so, and, and it's still, so it's a matter of measuring your risk and getting the adequate returns for your risk. So risk is quite consistent with sustainability. Some things are risky in their nature. Just make sure you know what you're doing. And if you can do that, and you can get enough returns, then it's quite consistent with sustainability. The last question is non-completion of projects. And the young man who wants laws passed about, about projects to be completed. I think that projects fail for one of two reasons in Nigeria. A lack of planning, which talks to sustainability. If you plan for something that's sustainable, then it will be, it will be completed. The second reason, which may be bigger, and my uh, dad referred to it, is corruption. People are not content to finish a job, create value, and then get paid for the value they've created. They want to take the money up front. And so when you take that money up front, the people that are building the project, a man comes to you and says, I want to build this auditorium, and it's going to cost one billion naira. You tell him, make it 1.5. And if he's crooked enough, you say, and keep five for me. If he's crooked enough, he may do that. Then he starts building the project, and he decides that, why am I giving this man five up front? Let me keep two for myself. Then, halfway down the road, maybe his kids need to go to school in the U.S., so it takes a little bit more. And then the project doesn't get completed. So corruption, I believe, is responsible. Corruption and corrupt thinking is responsible for most of those projects. And the only way we change it is not by passing laws, young man, is by changing the way we think and by making sure the people we put in positions of power do the right thing like I have seen your excellent vice chancellor doing here. Thank you. Let me, on behalf of uh, the university, apologize that we do not have enough time because this lecture obviously has engendered some not anxiety, people who want to talk about this, but there's so much, but uh, we don't have all that time. But what I'll suggest is that among students and faculty, that let this discussion go on, because it's important. And I like the comment made by the student, the lion from the, in the dark um, suit, who was trying to answer his question. Uh, those of you who are old enough would remember late Ukon, the broadcaster. At that time, it was not proper to refer to somebody as a comedian. Uh, but now it is a profession that makes a lot of money. People are happy to say, no, 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 I'm a, com a comedian. Ukonu said, ref, at the end of the war, and he was detained for it, that everything here in East Central State of Nigeria was earmarked. We want it to be earmarked. And that is the issue. I think you made a very valid point that if our lawmakers, with the kind of money they collect, can make a law to force governments to continue projects that are worthwhile. Projects that are worthwhile and that are going to be beneficial to society, then they, we ought to have a law to stop any incoming government from not completing that venture. I was very impressed with that comment. 
I'll now pass the microphone to uh, the university orator. And I thank you for being such a wonderful audience. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure we all enjoyed that interactive session. Thank you once again, uh, distinguished lecturer. It's time to cut the cake. Somebody baked the cake and we want to share in the eating of the cake. May I respectfully invite the following to please step down for the cutting of the 52nd Founders Day cake. Uh, distinguished Chairman of today's event, His Excellency Ambassador Chief Ato Mbanefo. is to be joined by the Pro-Chancellor and Chairman of Governing Council, the Vice-Chancellor and his wife, all council members and principal officers of the university. May I also request our distinguished Founders Day lecturer, Mr. Mustafa Chikubi, to please join them. I've been directed to invite the lady that baked the cake to please come. Ebele Obala, please. Okay, she's a lecturer in fine arts, I've been told, and she's already standing up. Pretty lady, young. While we go down, remember tomorrow we are coming back to the same place for the endowment fund launching 20 billion naira. It has started already. Thank you, the lecturer from the Faculty of Agriculture. Ili Roje Barianko, God bless you. Before I hand over the microphone to our distinguished chairman to direct the proceedings, i.e. the cutting of the cake, may I respectfully invite His Excellency, the Governor of Enugu State, represented by the Commissioner for Education, Dr. Simon Otuanya. May I also invite the National President of the University of Nigeria Alumni Association, as well as the Student Union Government President, Comrade Sunday Ukereke. Some people come this way. Please come this way. Come over this way so that we have some balance. Yeah. Your hand won't reach here or from there. <laughs> your hand won't reach there. DVC. Madam, your hand won't reach there. Come closer. Thank you. Um, can I ask uh, the Chairman of Council to hold that bit, and the Vice Chancellor to hold that bit. In fact, I don't think it is wise for visitors to be in the center, but since uh, we are your guests, you don't mind. So if all of us can try to reach whichever hand or shirt is closest to you, so we're all part of the show. Okay. On account of uh, 
um, uh, three, which will be U N N, and the last N we shall cut. All right, U N N. day to the University of Nigeria, please. Many more years to you, many more years to you, many more years to personalities you may retire to the high table once again
for the best music department. Thank you very much. We'll make a better day, you and me. And let's continue to stand together even tomorrow as we come for the endowment fund launching. So let's stand together, build together. Um, if uh, you don't have dollars on IRA to give, you have moral support. Eh? Don't let me ask of Osarokbole tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you very much. We have a special presentation to make, and uh, it's um, the love way of saying to our distinguished chairman and our special Founders Day lecturer. Thank you for finding time to be with us and for adding color to this special occasion. I wish to respectfully invite the Pro-Chancellor and Chairman, University of Nigeria Governing Council, Professor S. O. Iwe, to make the presentation on behalf of the university. The Pro Chancellor, sir. Uh, distinguished chairman, um, let me stand on an uh, existing protocol. Uh, I'm not making a comment yet. I'm only being called upon to make this presentation. But when Patoko told me this, I told him I had a quarrel with him. He was talking about what the university had achieved, what the university had achieved, what management had done. He didn't mention his wife. And that was a very serious omission. That was a very mysterious omission, because um, if you didn't have peace at home, if you didn't have good food at home, if you didn't have cooperation at home, certainly he couldn't have achieved half of what he has achieved. And there is a saying that for every successful man, there must be a good woman, a devoted woman, a meticulous woman solidly behind him. Be oh, well. Please, I go back to your superior suggestion. When I was launching a book many years ago, instead of congratulating me, let Professor UKJ, who was once the Dean of Education here, was congratulating my wife. And I say, how come? He said that that book could not have been written if she didn't support me. Supposing he had taken the manuscript and burnt them or taught them for being neglected, not being given enough attention, what would I have done? So, Patoko, when next you get up to talk, you should recognize the rule, the invaluable rule, the inestimable rule, the unquantifiable rule being played by the woman in your house. <coughs> now, since she's not here, there are a thousand and one other distinguished ladies I would ask to come and stand in for her. Uh, give me the honor of inviting my Deputy Vice Chancellor Enugu Campus to come and stand in for Mrs. Vice Chancellor and help me in delivering this token. This is symbolic token of our appreciation and the honor because you, the, you might as well have refused to come and there was nothing we could have done. But for having honored us and accepted our invitation, God bless you and grant you many, 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 many more years of useful and active life to the Nigerian nation. Please, on behalf of the university, go ahead and make the presentation. Yes, we'll go ahead and take it open. Go 
Oh, please, ask. All hands on deck. The sky is the limit. <laughs> the Thank second you. one. Thank you. Guest lecture. Guest lecture. Um, we have a, your job hasn't ended. <laughs> Come along. You still have something more to do. Uh, our guest lecturer. Those of you who were there at the Vice Chancellor's conference room can say no more than that I have been vindicated. Because when there he said, he might not be telling us anything new. He might only be coming to tell us some of the things we already know. Just reminding us. But I don't know how many of us here can sincerely and honestly claim to have known everything he said concerning sustainability. Because whether you like it or not, all the problems we have today in Nigeria can be summarized with the sentence, lack of sustainability. Everything we have be it our road, be it our education, whatever it is, it's lack of sustainability and corruption that is responsible for all our problems. So thank you for now extended our frontiers of knowledge. We are better educated today than we were before we came in here. And in appreciation of uh, like father, like son, of what you've done, a good representative of your father was a genius we have the honor to make this presentation to you on behalf of University of Nigeria and Soka, the management council and the entire university community in appreciation of the honor you've done to us. It's more symbolic and if you like, a legacy presentation. <clears throat> in the, in the kitchen here, not talking. I to ask. Oh no, it's upside down. No, he will be the first to see it. Let him say it first. Good. But look, okay, this is excellent. Whoever did this for you should go for world contest. Really good world contest. Very good fighting. No, this is great. Can you be that? Can you be that? Finally, on your anchor, the guest speaker. The guest speaker. We haven't finished. Finally, that's your second present by the university. Thank you, and God bless you. Yes, you can open it if you like. Where does the plaque? Yeah. Finally, before I take my seat, Batokolo will bear me out. That since I've been the pro chancellor of this university nearly four years ago, I never give him directives. I've always made suggestions. I've always said, why don't you do it this way? If you ask me from my own experience, because, because of my background, I hardly have any, any definition of terms as far as university, university management is concerned. I've just said to him, why don't you do it this way? Quite often he will say, yes, I think that is okay. So in the same way, let me give you the third directive 
in three and a half years I've been here. Namely, that the election by, by, by our chairman of the occasion and the one by our legacy lecturer should be printed into, mono, into monographs and made available to all the students of this university. <laughs> should be printed into monographs because the story our chairman told us today is something I had stood for all these years in all our national and uh, international conferences, even recently in Port Harcourt, I think you were there, when we, people would have to turn the history of university education in Nigeria upside down and want to play down on Osaka and always get up and say some of the things he said today. But I have learned more because there are some details I didn't know. I came into this university as a student. I did my school since 1960 and came in here 61 and graduated 65. I was among the third graduates of the university. The first set were 1963. The second set, 1964. And we were the 1965 set. And before we went on and on and on elsewhere to be what we are. So thank you very much. And I think what you've taught, taught us today, I'm sure Beto Group didn't know many of them. <laughs> After he's such a lion. <laughs> So I'm asking Bato Kuru that by the time council meets again in six weeks' time or thereabout, I would want to see the two lectures, the two lectures I published in one single monograph and possibly made available to the university community. Thank you, Bato, and I hope that it will be carried out. Thank you, Pro Chancellor. Thank you for making wives <laughs> here feel good and feel great. Thank you for appreciating our role as wives. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to react to that. Somebody said good ones. I want to invite the Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration, Professor Malaki Okweze, for the vote of tanks. Professor Okweze, please. The chairman of this occasion, the chairman, the presidential and chairman of council, our Founders Day Lecturer, Mr. Vincent Slow, permit, permit me to stand on the already established protocol. My job here is to say thank you to those who have made various inputs and contributions that led to the success of today's ceremony. I must start from the governor of Enugu State, his Excellency Barrister Sullivan Ihana Chime, ably represented by the Honorable Commission of Education in Ugu State. The presence of the governor and the government of Enugu State is not something new to us here. It is something we nearly almost always take for granted. Not for granted because we don't value it, but the level of support we have always had from the government of Enugu State in various ways, in security, in infrastructural development, can only be, my, can only be appreciated on our behalf if God grants him good health and support from the good people of Enugu State and all those residents in Enugu State. So we thank the government, governor and government of Enugu State for this continued support for this institution. And I'm, I'm sure that we all know that the governor himself is an alumnus of this great university. The second person is the chairman, the chairman of this occasion. His Excellency, Chief Ato Mbanefo, MFR, I would say 
Odu, I, I hope I will get it this time. The Odu Osodo. Odu Osodo. Katuku Mbanefo the third. Yes. In fact, my first contact uh, with him was when I, where the university sent me to commiserate with him on the demise of uh, his brother. And, uh, but for his imposing height and very smooth and unwrinkled face, his simplicity would have deceived me. I would have passed him. I didn't know he was the person I came to meet. <laughs> but like the vice chancellor said, I'll use my own words in order not to, I'll just say he's been everywhere. But that is just not to repeat what the vice chancellor said by the apt description when he said, the man has seen it all. I think that is very apt. He sits down simply, and you hardly will know that he's an octogenarian, but he has mentioned to us today that he's 83 years of age. And I'm told by one of his aides that uh, people of 40 will not meet his feet when he enters his gym. And you can see, <laughs> you can see how he looks. Today, when he arrived, he entered the vice chancellor's office and he was offered a seat. And then he said no, that uh, he wasn't going to sit down. He would like to stand around for a few minutes because he has sat down for nearly three hours in the vehicle and he knows he's going to sit down more number of hours. That tells you how fit the Udu at 80 is. And we have him here. It is a great pleasure. And we want to thank him and appreciate him for honoring us with his very distinguished and eminent presence. Thank you. The Founders Day lecturer is an exceptionally distinguished Nigerian, especially for his age. You, you look at him, you think he's just one of us. But he's not one of us, he's distinct in several ways. He is again, maybe this is an inheritance from uh, his adopted father, like he said. Very simple and this family unassuming. He just looks like one of the, <laughs> one of any, anyone in this uh, company walking about and doing his normal duties, entering a research laboratory and coming out like uh, the likes of uh, Jiru Gwai, slim as uh, he looks and up and about. And uh, in spite of uh, the long journey he made yesterday, as soon as he arrived, he was excited when he was invited by Vicence Law to take a look around. And uh, the tour took that entourage to many places beyond even uh, the time that the Vicence Law thought he had, that, that is our guest lecturer had to, to spend. I won't tell you where we ended up, yes, but it <laughs> But uh, I think he was, uh, he, he gave us the impression that he had thoroughly enjoyed the tour and himself. <laughs> and so we have him today speaking, still in that very simplistic manner, that we get our students asking questions that are very probing. Not everyone writes a, a, a lecture and comes to speak to it in the simple manner that he has done uh, today. And I'm not sure, I'm here. I'm and you can see that the pro chancellor has given a directive because he was so much impressed by the way and manner of that delivery. And we owe so many thanks to you. And we hope, we hope that by doing this, you are not only an honorary lion as you have, you have desired to be, but an ambassador, an ambassador of this university. Because I noticed that yesterday, he was saying, I'm going to do the, I'm going to speak to this person, I'm going to speak to this. People are doing great in this university. And I don't think it takes any more to be an ambassador of an institution. And the way he spoke, and he has been speaking since he arrived here. I want to thank you and appreciate you. Thank you very much. The chairman, the pro chancellor and chairman of council, uh, because I don't know whether the chairman of this occasion repeated this distinction here which he made during the course call, the distinction between pro-chancellor and chairman of council. And uh, you notice that since then, I've been struggling to ensure that I don't only totally say chairman of council. I say pro-chancellor and chairman of council. 
we have a wonderful council, not only the chairman, but all the members of uh, council, for the wonderful support they have given this admi administration. Just like he said, if you don't have a good backyard, there is sadly much you can uh, achieve. This council has been exceptionally supportive, and this administration is very thankful, and counts on the, continues to count on the council to continue for its continued uh, support. They have always come around on these kinds of occasions, in spite of uh, very other pressing engagements. So we thank the chairman and members of council uh, for being here. I can look, see the excellent members of council, uh, Excellency Patrick Adaba, Professor Zilibe, and uh, the rest of us who are uh, here as members of council. Thank you very much. Let me appreciate the, the other principal officers of this university for the effort everyone is making to ensure that we continue in our stride in joining our vice law in his revolutionary steps to advance this university. Let me appreciate the vice law specifically. The vice law of this university, this great university, Professor Batokolo, uh, is, is, is now, we are not used to his strides. And each time he brings us here, we are not talking only of the infrastructure development, but each time he brings us here, and remember, if it is not Obasanjo, then it is the vice president of this country. If it is not Fashola, the governor of uh, Lagos State, it is the secretary of government, Senator Pius Anim. And today, it is not just Mr. Mustafa Chikubi, but the Udu himself. And I think these are people of very high pedigree. And we must continue to thank our vice law for the inspiration and motivation we get when we see this kind of people speak to us here. Mr. vice law thank you very much. We wish you all the more grace that you need and strength to continue to push us forward. Let me appreciate the deans of faculty directors of institutes and centers, professors, heads of departments, and colleagues who are gathered uh, here. The vice law will always say that it is only with your support and continued prayers that he has been able to achieve what he has achieved and what he continues to achieve. We want to appreciate you and appreciate your support for always being around to give this support. Let me appreciate our royal fathers who are seated uh, here. When you see people dressed like this, you can be sure that you have the support of the local community. The local community support is very important, and we thank those of our royal fathers around who make it a point of duty to always support us when we gather like this, especially on the occasion of the Founders Day. Thank you very much. May I also appreciate the members of the University of Nigeria Alumni Association. Let me appreciate the president who is here seated. Like the Vice Chancellor has said, he goes across everywhere. And he has always mentioned the tremendous goodwill that he finds all the time when he moves around within and outside Nigeria from the alumni. I want to thank members of the Alumni Association for their continued support for their university. May I mention our students who are here, the very reason for which we are here. The vice law is very anxious about the infrastructural development, those that are material and immaterial, internet access, bandwidth, and all that. These things are only for our students. The library, the visual library, and all that. We only need them because we need to also be up and about on our duty to mentor the students. Otherwise, these facilities are basically for the students. And we appreciate the students for the way in the last two years, I think we've had some quiet moment, very responsible leadership of the students' union and we must not take this for granted. Thank you very much. Yes, somebody was asking me, this department of, uh, these people who are, who are singing, where are they from? 
And we have always had that kind of question from our very distinguished guests. They are staff and students of the Department of uh, Music. Please, can we appreciate them? Yes. Thank you very much. May I appreciate all the other distinguished guests in our midst who came from far and wide, those who came with uh, our distinguished lecturer, our distinguished chairman, and all who have decided to spend this day, to spend their time for us this day. I want to thank everyone. I want to thank the press for being here. And we want to plead. In fact, I was so excited the way our founders day lecturer handled the question on the issue of uh, the allowance of senators and house of reps. Because we didn't want the import of this lecture to be swallowed by Mr. Mustafa comment slash in the, in the allowances of uh, senators and all that. Please, when you report, this is a very special lecture that we very much value. Please go to the issues so that we can, from here, speak to other Nigerians on the issue that our guest lecturer has spoken on. So thank you very much. May I thank, finally, the Senate Ceremonials Committee for the very good organization. We can always rely on, we can always count on them that we, we can always have a good organization when we have this kind of thing. I want to thank them for what they have done, and I want to thank the university orator for the way, the way she has always represented us uh, well here. I must thank the university, Miss Biara. Miss Biara, because as I was about stopping, he looked at my face, and I, I said, this is a man whose hand, you need to watch him when he's carrying the mace. You will be wondering whether that hand is made of steel. I think we need to appreciate you also for that. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Vice Chancellor, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. DVC, for thanking us. I've been directed to announce as follows. The Founders Day cocktail takes place at the UBA Hall of Fame immediately after the closing of this ceremony. Tomorrow, we'll be having the endowment fund launching. The 20 billion Naira University of Nigeria endowment fund launching. You're not excited about it. You should be excited about this. I, I say to people that um, I am not shy talking about money. If you, if you frown any time money is mentioned, money will keep running away from you. So I like talking about money. And any time I talk about money, I smile. And that attracts money. Don't I look as if I'm surrounded with money? <laughs> so I talk about money. And um, you can call me a professional fundraiser. I don't mind. But you see, we need to give back to this place. I know that as staff, we are already giving back. But let's come tomorrow and support this good, um, good activity, a thought out activity, uh, which is going to be an enduring one. Let's also use this opportunity to reach out to our friends and invite them. Because I'm sure that the Vice Chancellor will have an opportunity to let us know what the university is doing, this particular administration. And it will take us working together. If we have one mind, we can raise this university. It took the men of Babel having one mind. And nothing could stop them except God. God will not stop us because this venture is God's own. He's interested in it. So I want to trust God and count on your support, believing that tomorrow we'll have this hall full. Owele Rocha Sokorocha will be here, and he's coming in a big way. You know when Owele comes. When Owele comes. So we are looking forward to having you here tomorrow. Time is 11 a.m. The um, Founders Day celebrations continues 
as we have in our program. On Friday, there will be the Jumat service at Central Mosque, University of Nigeria, and Sukkah at 1 p.m. And Sunday, we have a Thanksgiving service at St. Peter's Chaplaincy, University of Nigeria, and Sukkah here at 10 a.m. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen,